Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Three Points of Light. Um, it used to be called Angel Meadows. still is my website, but the show is now called Three Points of Light. Your three points of light are myself, Jennifer's Journey, and Brian Clover. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. I'm talking, I'm talking like I have the camera on. I'm playing. It's a good thing I don't have the camera on. Brian? Did I want to know? <laughs> um, I'm in Australia. I've only just woken up. Uh, it's day. My views for what they are is the, uh, you know, a long time getting into, um, you can't call it supernatural stuff, but it's, uh, Gifts. The gifts came along very slowly. Um, when I was a kid, uh, it was pushed out of me. I wasn't allowed to do it. Um, things came as I got older. More and more, I found the spirit was looking after me. Absolutely beautiful. Mostly when I was in um, in trouble, in problems, you know, whether it be hiding me from danger, or even um, when something is desperately needed. It used to come and I'd receive it and think then we'll move on. Um, I had a big change in my life um, 10 years ago. Uh, then realised that what I did have was um, different to most actually uh, hear people's thoughts. Um, it wasn't really healing, it was more, uh, hearing, sorry, it was more, um, you could feel what they were thinking. And this became more and more of a habit until going into shopping centres was terrible because you could virtually hear everybody that was there all at the same time. Um, I learned after a while to sort of bubble myself so I was protected against all that sort of stuff. Um, then it became a lot clearer because then I could individually pick on a person. And this had only been eight years ago. Say, so I do uh, <laughs> remote viewing. Because I was able to go to um, train to transcendental meditation. It um, was one of these slow to be learned things. Uh, I can now get to the depth that uh, you cannot even feel your body. The whole being is just floating. But uh, the Buddhist way is that you should just stay there and relax and for me this wasn't enough and I picked up a, a book from a guy who was fantastic. Going into his book, he tells you that there are so many other things that you can do when you're at your level. And the book that you picked up, Brian, that was Jose Silva's book, right? Sorry? The book that you cho that you picked up, that was the Jose Silva method, right? It's my mind control method. Okay. Um, because of that, as I say, you learn to detach your mind from what you regularly think. Um, you know, a piece of wood is a piece of wood, it's hard, a piece of steel is even harder. Well, if you try and break away from that, you find that after a while, you can actually go inside things. Like uh, we started off with a peach. You go inside a peach, you can actually feel the inside of the skin, the flesh. You can smell the flesh. You virtually reteach yourself how to live. So it's it's a it's a new way of looking at it because everything you're taught is it's a physical thing. Everything is there. You. Um, you accept what everybody else tells you as a child. Well, that's all gone now. Um, <laughs> it 
come to the point where you say, well, now I can do anything, and you can literally put your mind anywhere you want in the world. You can put it inside houses, inside people, inside animals. By doing that, it enables you to then get a completely new perspective on the way we live and the way we're held back by our fears or whatever the case may be. Um, I've found, that in all honesty, um, by putting that, uh, you know, virtually remote viewing, you do your remote viewing, uh, as I say, I can go right across the world. I've never really tried to go outside this world, astral plane and all that, because in all honesty, I don't even know enough about this world yet, so I didn't want to sort of push it and go silly. So I've never really tried. Um, Mind reading or telepathy, I find this pretty easy at times, unless, like at the moment, I'm nervous. Uh, that would hold me back for quite a while. On the other hand, the um, you combine remote viewing and telepathy, you get amazing results. Um, you know, even searching for people and things. The amount of success that you get is quite phenomenal, but it's just a long time training and meditation is the start of it all. And, uh, I often get the same thing, you know, oh, well, yeah, I've tried, now, I've done it for a couple of days and it didn't work, you know, it doesn't work. Meditation takes a minimum, a minimum of 21 days. And that's half an hour in the morning, half an hour later on in the afternoon. I don't believe in doing it before you go to bed because you fall asleep. Um, once you have trained your mind to be able to do the meditation, I always do mine with uh, three fingers on my left hand, together yeah, like my thumb and the first two fingers. That way then it tells my mind to go to that position. Most of it's exactly the same as training a dog or training, you know, an animal to do a certain thing, it's only repetition. So 21 days to get there. If you know the more you do it then, the more adept you become. You don't have to do all the, the countdown or the, um, the different tricks that people use to do it. Uh, the Buddhists use OM. It's a beautiful way of doing things, but it gets boring and then your mind starts wandering. Um, the, you know, you can have a word that you keep repeating. That, that's good, but after a while, the mind keeps on moving. You've got to try and keep your mind into a place where, really, um, the mind hasn't got a choice. That's the way I do it. Um, when we do it on breathing, I breathe in, say a number, and then out and then breathe in again and then another number, you know, like coming down from say 50 to 49, 48, such. Uh, so I don't do it now because my mind's got so um, adapted to doing it. Just fall into that lane. It's exactly the same as training the dog to sit or stay or anything else. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to be. I, I, I find that I start my day off every day with probably two or three minutes of meditating. Um, I can go down to a massive level, no problem at all. Um, floating around. As I say meditation is the start of everything. Once you once you really learn to do it and get into it, concentrate on it. I know people people that have taken seven months to get to that position, but this particular guy he, he tried and tried and tried and tried. And eventually he got there, and it was it was really really good because to see the change in him, and he is terrific at it now. But he won't go visiting, he won't go uh, chasing around to find you know different things in his mind. He just likes the, the relaxation of meditation. You find that once you get to a decent point, you don't hear anything at all. Literally, you, your mind closes up. Uh, you can. Train your mind to open up to people's voices if they come into a room. And as it is now, I mean, we've got a major highway outside of my house, and I don't even hear them. A big truck's going past, and you know, 
line their brakes as they come down the hill. Yeah, it's, uh, not people say, I don't know how you can even listen to the television, no, but you can. Faith. Give yourself a break. You know, if you go into meditation and really, really try, don't play, just do it, concentrate. And uh, it, it becomes your way of life. And so much more will come to you from there, believe me. Lots of other things that come into this um, mind control business because people haven't even you know, to learn yet what um, what the mind can do. Uh, years ago, I mean, I'm talking <laughs> 30 years ago, um, 20 years ago. These bells, you glue the bell to the front door. You put the the battery, you know, battery bell anywhere in the house. And someone rings on the bell, you know, rings the doorbell, uh, it, it goes off. Well, I found that I can literally concentrate on one and make the bell ring. Now, this this is one thing that I can prove without a shadow of a doubt. My, my ex-wife, I used to play games, and I'd ring the bell and just sit there. Uh, she'd go and answer the front door. And... Uh, Anyway, this went on for a while, and I found that uh, I could do two at a time, you know, ring, because they're all on different frequencies, and I could actually ring one bell and then the other bell, and she, my missus still wouldn't believe me that uh, she was doing it, and so I said, well, you tell me which bell to ring, and I was, you know, ding dong, ding dong all around the room, and putting them in different rooms, and so on and so forth, but it worked, and it worked so well that uh, I was talking to this, um, you know, the Buddhist monk who trained me, and uh, it's just mind games, absolute mind games. He said, the mind is capable of so much more. But, I mean, as you said, levitation. Levitation is one thing. Why the hell you would I ever want to use levitation? I don't know, but... <laughs> um, as I say, there's so many other things that the world we're hidden from in the world. I don't think we're at the point yet where everybody can attain the same amount of clarity on what is in your mind. Anyway, that's me. I've, uh, I've done many things over many, many years. I've been, as I say now, I've done my first meditation with these Buddhist monks. Um, that was in 1980, uh, and so it's been going on ever since. And I lived my life in a spiritual way, as simple as that. Yes, I swear. Yes, I smoke. Everything else that people shouldn't do. Uh, oh, it's good. No, I do not. <laughs> you ready? You see what you can do. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Um, Jennifer? Okay. Um, I uh, actually, uh, you know, started uh, realizing, you know, the things going on with me since before my teenage years. Um, I always, you know, I mean, I always questioned and wondered. I always knew there was a lot more to it, but it, uh, throughout my life, all the crazy things, you know, and Things weren't always so good, so it wasn't until the death of a loved one in 2011 that I finally couldn't run any longer from what was going on, so I decided to explore it, accept it, and embrace it. So uh, I've been on my spiritual path since actually 2011. I know I do. I connect with the angels. I connect with uh, animals. Uh, I get the numbers, um, and I connect with spirit. I uh, am really getting into spirit photography, and there's some other things that I want to explore. Um, I've been in hibernation for a little while. Um, it was a much needed rest. Um, I feel you know you can't uh, take on too much sometimes, and uh, I took on a little bit too much. It was very overwhelming. And uh, 
So now I feel like I am, you know, rejuvenated, relaxed, ready, refreshed um, to get back to business. Um, start doing some readings again. Um, that's something that I'm very passionate about. I love doing. Uh, starting to get back to living again. Um, doing what I love to do. Um, there's a lot of other things that I do want to explore. Um, I'm very into like Brian, the remote, uh, the remote viewing. Um, I'm, no, I'm a little bit better at that than I really thought I was. Um, I do a lot of astral traveling, get a lot of visitations. Uh, like I said, things have been pretty hectic and wild around here. <laughs> and, uh, I think that was spirit's way of letting me know what I needed to do and also showing off for some others. And letting them know that, you know, we have to step back and do what we have to do, you know, to make things easier so mom can get back to what she wants to do. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, to, to this, doing the show and doing some other things and connecting again. Are you there, Mama D? No, everything's gone. Can anybody hear me? Hello, Daisy. How are you, love? I don't know whether Mama D's got problems, but... Um No, darling, I can't hear you, sweetie. I don't know what's going on with something else. Not, not. I heard that one, Jen. I think it's supernatural radio waved his wand over the top of it and it's all gone wrong. <laughs> Mine seems to be working because it's lighting up at the side. Your mum would eat it, isn't it? Never mind. Um, let Mama D sort that out. We'll go on from there. Um, has anybody in the room actually done any uh, real remote view? So as you can, I mean, people go on to me and they say, for, you know, as an example, a lady from one of your states over in America got on to me and she was asking if I could tell her whether the outbuilding that she was having put up was going to be in the right place because she was she wanted a um, meditation room come reading room and to keep all the crystals in and so on and so forth anyway I went to my level and went over there no I said uh, hey, you've got this we have an intent to build it. I said, it, it's the wrong place. I said, it should be around the other side of your house. And the house was at an angle to the road. I said, well, if you bring it round to the front, I said, you don't get many cars going past. I said, but the railway line at the bottom of the garden, quite a few trains running back and forward there, and that will really upset if you're doing meditation or doing a reading or something like that. And it all went quiet. And, you know, I said, well, how the... Uh, 
how the hell do you know there's a railway at the bottom of my driveway? <laughs> so, so that, that is that is it exactly. I said, you know, you can move your mind around. You can um, see things that are happening. I think this is a very important thing. Uh, the, the ability to be able to control your mind. Let's say, Jose Silva's book is fantastic. Um, it's called Mind Control. Um, and people always think, oh, God, no, you know, it, it's uh, trying to control other people's minds. And it's not. It's nothing to do with other people's minds at all. It's purely yours. And they produced this book, first of all, and I think it was about 1973. Been since turned into um, CDs, five CDs, and I think they sell the thing to about two hundred or three hundred dollars. Uh, I bought them, and to be honest, which cost me eleven dollars, is ten times better. Mr. Silver himself passed away quite a few years ago. I think it was the 60s or 70s. He is a was Mexican guy, very low on education. But yeah, very low on education. And but he taught his children how to meditate. He taught them, and because uh, their, their grades at school were pretty low, he. Um, was, I think he lived in Laredo in Texas. Anyway, he taught them how to meditate and then he went on then to sort of find out why the mind works in particular ways. And he was very, very, very successful. But as I say, this book, Mind Control, by, it's called the Jose Silva Method of Mind Control. Uh, believe me, get it, read it, study it. I mean, I've read the same book four times now. Mind you, this is my third copy because people keep borrowing it off me and I don't get them back. So. <laughs> but uh, $11 a time, it, it matters not really. But, um, you know, you're not on yet, Mama, Mama D. She's gone walkies. Are you still working, Jenny? Can you hear me now? Goodness. You are okay. Well. Can you hear me? I can hear you well, love, no problem. Okay. Can everybody else hear me? Good. Uh okay. Mama is trying to get back in. Oh, okay. I was just listening to what you were saying. And Brian, you are very good at what you do. Um for everybody that doesn't know Brian, Brian's from Australia and uh very, very good at what he does. Um, he has practiced on me a few times, and he's very accurate um, down to the details. Uh, actually, there's a few things that he had told me that I still haven't shared with him that ended up coming true for, uh, to fruition. <laughs> Not, you know, just all the pleasantries, but uh, they did come to, you know, fruition. And uh, that's why I needed a little bit of extra time uh, to back up and regroup and uh, swallow and spit. <laughs> so, but yes, you are very good at what you do. And, and what you say about the meditation, I'm one that can't really. Um, yes, Diane, I do agree. Um, I'm one that could never just sit and, you know, and meditate. Um, I would usually say I'm going to meditate and I would fall fast asleep. Now it's, it's easier and it does. Now once you get into the routine and you devote yourself and dedicate yourself to this, it does, it does come so much easier. Um, the and I, is, pardon? The thing, is, the thing is, with females, They've got a million things to think of all of the time. I mean, oh yeah, when, when, a, when a girl's there, at the, you know, doing the doing the dinner or something like that, she's not just thinking about the dinner. She's thinking about what the kids are going to wear tomorrow. Do the ironing, do the cooking. Um, oh, I've got to clean this one. I've got to change the beds. So, you know, and all those things. Bloke, a man, they've only got two things to think of. 
and you know what they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Food>. <laughs> no, joking apart, though, um, it is a very difficult thing to convince yourself that you are able to do it. Um, right. Most, most women who do deep meditation um, are retirees because you, you know, they sit there and they can, you know, spend time at it. Uh, they get enough sleep that they're not going to fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Um, that's another thing that is really good. I mean, I can get into bed and I can be asleep in three to five seconds. Because oh, I just tell me. myself, tell myself that that's it, it's bedtime. I'll pull the covers up in a minute, I'm gone. And, uh, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful way to live. Right. Because yeah, that, I've uh, I've been having, my sleep pattern has been on and off. I've been... Uh, try you know, like I said, spreading myself very thin. Uh, what I've been doing a lot lately is if I have to sit out and have my morning coffee, um, and just sit there. I have spent a lot of time, um, sit, just sitting out there in nature and paying attention to what I was getting from that. Uh, you know, when I sleep, it's not really sleep. Uh, it's either somebody's visiting me in my dreams or I'm off somewhere. So that wasn't quite the rest I needed as well. But um, I do really any uh, – washing dishes for me was meditation. I could stick my hands in the water and start washing the dishes and all of a sudden look up and things were, you know, coming to me. Um it's it you know I feel you do whatever works for you, but the meditation is very important, no matter which way you know you do it. Yeah. You have well, to meditate. Yeah, when um, I mean when it first started for me, I mean I'm involved. You know, I'm basically I'm a sewing machine mechanic, fitter, turner. And virtually I've got seven trades. Anyway, thing being is. Um, I was working in a factory and I was repairing this rotary compressor and I had to I welded up the centre plate because the centre plate had split right across. Anyway, I welded it all up and I was on this big grindstone and I was grinding it off flat because we didn't have angle grinders in those days. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd locked the factory when I came in. It's a Sunday. I'd locked the factory um, so there's no one could sort of come in and creep up behind me. Uh, that's the sort of thing we used to do in London. It was <laughs> a little bit uh, iffy, but... Um, anyway, as I'm grinding around this plate, I suddenly felt three taps on my left shoulder, which immediately I turned around, and you wouldn't believe <laughs> the grindstone wheel itself, which was a 10-inch one, it exploded and went straight over my right shoulder. If I'd have stood there and it had exploded, I'd have got it right in the face. But this is what I mean by spirit will look after you. Spirit does everything for you. You've got to believe. You've got to really. Just allow them to come into your life. It's as simple as that. And, uh, I've, um, I've had many, many, many inc incidents of spirit helping me out. Um, I done. I used to do a lot of uh, car repairs when I was a lot younger. I was first married, and mm -hmm. my wife wasn't particularly good at keeping money, so. Uh, in those days, we used to get paid on a Friday afternoon, a little envelope with all your cash in it. And then, uh, anyway, it was all gone by sort of Wednesday night, and she told me I've got no money for, you know, food tomorrow. Oh, no. So, anyway, this particular day, I've got my tools out, and I've been repairing a car. And I was cleaning all the, all the rough off of it, you know, the uh, all the grease and the oil and God knows what else. I could go around. Factories in London at the time used to be open virtually 24 hours a day. And uh, I went to, so I started cleaning my tools up. Uh, and all of a sudden there was a knock, knock, knock on the door. And Brian, can you come and fix my car? You know, oh Christ, yeah, hang on. And I made enough money to see us through to his paycheck. Anyway, um, this went on for, for, I should say, a good seven or eight months, every time that she was out of money, I'd just clean the tools up and there would be, you know, a knock on the door or ring on the bell or whatever, and I'd go out and fix something. And Anyway, it, I thought to myself, well, I've got to test this. I want to find out why, how, and all the rest of it. So the guy had this big 
I mean, that's your same machine to sell. And uh, well, I said to him, you know, how much do you want for it? He says, oh, fifty pound to do. You know, that, that, that's you know, I mean, at the time that was a hell of a lot of money. It was twice, three times what I was getting per week with wages. Anyway, uh, I said, well, I'll try and sell it for you. Anyway, he we loaded it into the back of my station wagon and off and over to this guy over in the West End and uh, he used to buy sewing machines and he said, oh, yeah. he said uh, I'll give you £350 for that, you know, well I mean you fell off sideways and he paid the money and I thought well I've only thought I'd give the guy £50, 50 pounds. so uh, anyway, put the money in my wallet and left it in my back pocket and I thought well, I won't say nothing about this because her who must be obeyed will be uh, <laughs> Spending it on all sorts of stupid bloody stuff, you know, other than food. <laughs> anyway, so I didn't say a word. Anyway, the next week she said to me, Oh, I've run out of money again, you know. So, I said, oh, all right, I'll get my tools out. So I got my tools out and started cleaning. Nothing. Didn't get, no, nobody came down, nobody knocked on the door, rung the bell, nothing. And I then realised that never take more than you need. You know, spirit will only help you if you really need. And you, you virtually, you know, you're on the bread line. And that's how I've lived my life ever since. I mean, it's not a good thing because now we live in a cardboard box out in the backyard. But <laughs> the, um, the point being that, you know, don't take advantage of spirit. Uh, you can't just use them as a way of life. They're there to help us. They're there to see us right through the rest of our lives. Uh, that's how I found, I mean, even now, uh, wanted to. You know, I've been retired now for nine, ten years, and uh, thought myself I'd like to make a bit of money. We've got Christmas coming up, and we just live on the pension. But yeah, and uh, anyway, within I, I suppose it was within an hour, a friend of ours got through and says, "Oh, Brian, do you still repair sewing machines?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Only I." She's a hairdresser, you know, and she said, oh, one of my customers is looking for someone to repair a machine for her. You yeah, know, worries, I can do that. Anyway, that led to another one. So, you know, I've made sort of a hundred odd dollars within, you know, two days. And I thought, well, there you go, Spirit. Thank you very much. This is it. They'll always come to your aid. It's a matter of belief. You don't use them. You've really got to just believe. And, uh, this is something, as I say, since, uh, since I was a kid protection, looking after you, making sure that you're safe. It, it's all there for you if only people would relax enough to believe what's going on. I mean, I was a, a very isolated child and I learnt patience, I learnt to control my mind uh, before I was even five years old. It wasn't a nice childhood, I'll be honest. But it taught me to be me, not to rely on other people all of the time. And, uh, I don't know how you got on, Jen, as a, as a child, but um, me, I've, uh, I've really... You know, once you realise what's going on, you can really enjoy it. Um, yes, all right, you get your ups and downs. I mean, I'm called weird more times than most people could look at stick at. But uh, the things that you can achieve inside your own mind, I think it is absolutely phenomenal. Right. I always felt I was different. Um, I never felt like I really fit in. Um, I was, well, everybody said I was overly sensitive. Um, I was just a big damn empath. Excuse my language. Uh, I mean, everything I took to heart. Uh and somebody, you know, the little old lady down the street was sick. I felt that. I, you know, I wanted to rush to her aid to do whatever I could. I couldn't handle anybody getting picked on, bullied. I was um, always trying to look out for everybody. But, I, you know, I, I didn't like school. I would daydream. Um, my mind would wander. I just, uh, I wasn't interested in that stuff. I was more interested on, uh, you know, interested in what was going on around me, uh, taking care of other people, making sure everybody else was okay. Uh, like I said, I was s such a 
big empath that, you know, people always use. She's overly sensitive. She's a sissy. She's a crybaby. She, you know, but um, it has taught me an awful lot. And um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say there's some things that I wouldn't change. Um, and I sure wish I would have paid very close to my intuition um, a long time ago. I could have avoided some things, but that those easy. were lessons that I was supposed to learn, and I have learned an awful lot. Yeah, but that is it, Jen. It's the intuition side of things. You know, people seem to think that they, they talk about your third eye and all that. Well, obviously, the third eye is intuition. Now, right. I have found that by being able to concentrate purely on your intuition, that intuitive gap, which is where people think your third eye is, I've always put it that it's like a, a band that goes around your head. Now, mm-hmm. I can do certain things. Um, other people can do a lot more. Some people can do less. I mean, who cares? But the thing being is, it's not just a matter of picking on a certain subject. It's what what comes to you in your intuition. Now, those that intuition band, intuitive band across your forehead, I, I've always looked at it that, in that band, there are many, many, many doors. What doors open are the doors that you use. I mean, with all the things, I mean, if you write down all the things you can do, you must have that many doors. Now, other people have got many more things that they can do, and those doors, there's probably hundreds of things that the mind can do that, in all honesty, um, people do not uh, understand or realize or accept the fact that the, the mind can do so much more. And right. Like yourself, I, I was a um, uh, funny child, I suppose. I mean, I had an older sister and a younger brother. And I was re- <laughs> realised, or they used to call me the dirty hand brigade because I was always taking things apart and doing all that sort of stuff which wasn't appreciated by my family in London. They, I mean, they owned loads of houses before the war and everything was going fine for them until the war came along and from the crap out of every, everything that was there, uh, they were left with one house at the end of it, which really broke the Clover family in half. Um, they didn't know how they were going to go. It was more a matter of, let, let's just try and survive. So. They were all managers, they had their own businesses and all the family and it was a big family. Uh, and I say I was the odd one out, I was a mechanic and they wanted me as an office worker and it just didn't work. I, I couldn't handle that side of things. But what I've looked at it now is doing exactly what I was meant to do. And I think I've learned since I believe strongly that everybody is here for a purpose and you will serve that purpose. Mama D, are you back, love? I think so. Can you hear me? Oh, Um, yes, we can hear you. Yay! As I said, I'm keeping guests open just in case. Okay, great, (laughs) great. Well, let me uh, welcome everybody who's come in while I was in the reboot section. Um, Okay, a little bit about who Mama D Darlene is. Um, Some of you know me as Mama D. And some of you know me as Darlene. Either way, it works perfectly. I have no, I'm not that difficult. Um, as a child, I don't remember a whole lot of my childhood, but I do remember some things that I do remember. Um, we were hushed things when I had my imaginary friends and I would daydream with the angels. I was, I was hushed and I was told to, you know, this, don't be silly, you know. You're not talking to angels, you know. It's time to put your imaginary friend away and make real friends. And I never really had close friends because I didn't feel that I could be myself. Um, About, I think it was in 2011, my daughter came to me and she said, Mom, I need to talk to you and you need to not say a word until I'm finished. And in our family, that means usually means it's a biggie. So we sat downstairs in my room, and she told me exactly 
what she was going through with her connection to spirit and what she would see and hear and feel. And it was a good conversation for about an hour. And I was, I nodded my head, I smiled, and I just shut my mouth, which was really hard for me to do. But uh, at the end, she said, okay, Mom, now you can call the people in the white coats and have me taken away and, you know, put in a padded room. And I waited a couple of seconds, and I looked at her, and I smiled, and I said, you know what? If they take you away, then I'm going to be in the room right next to you. Because right then and there, I knew that it, that little door opened again, just very slightly. And I knew that I had been there before. I had done things before that related to this. So from that moment on, I kind of sort of started reopening things, ex- opening myself I made Mama D because I didn't want my my family and my bosses to know what I was, you know, exploring because back then I wasn't sure. I mean, I didn't give a hoo-ha what most people thought about me, but, you know, it was my job and my family. I wasn't sure how they would take it. So I just mm, created Mama D. And I met quite a few very important people in my life that um, allowed me to be myself and helped me to grow and to accept. I went into um, an esoteric shop, spiritual store, and uh, I said, okay, I said, in, not out loud because I wasn't sure <laughs> how exactly to do it. I said, okay, who's calling me? What is it I'm here to find? And uh, because I'm in Quebec, most of the cards were in French, but as you can tell, I'm English. So I just sort of walked around the store, and all of a sudden I kept my attention, kept getting pulled to this one little tiny corner, and there were a lineup of about seven decks, all in English, and they were all Doreen Virtue cards. And I just sort of smiled, and I went, angels, how can I not? So my very first deck was, um, believe, healing with the angels, Doreen Virtue. And I do readings with cards, and I, I'm also a Reiki practitioner. Um, but a lot of this, a lot of what I do, I, I call it, for lack of a better word, I call it mom, mama sense. Um, even when I'm doing a reading for somebody, um, I'll get a card, and the card will answer the question, but I will get something extra, a little, a little kick in the butt. And, and I will pass it on. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I know that if somebody asks me a question and they're, I can give you both sides of the fence. That's where I do it. I sort of separate myself from the, from the emotional part of it. And this is, you know, this is what I do. And one of the things I've always wanted to be able to do was to help people. And somebody once said to me, I should make sleepy time videos for adults because I have the voice. And I said, like, okay, my voice can put people to sleep. <laughs> nice. But uh, and I, I decided to look into having a radio show and uh, Smarty Pants Millicent. And um, it worked well. And uh, I find what my my... My forte is, I know, um, is that I make my guests that I have on my shows, I do it because I want them to shine. I want them, for me, everything has to be, okay, not everything. Here I go, hokey pokey again. I want love, light, sparkles, sprinkles, unicorns, butterflies. I want good. Um 99% 99% of the time, you give me a negative situation, and I will find the silver lining in that cloud. It's just what I do. There are times that I can't, I admit, and, and it makes me a little bit crazier. Um, but, you know, I want I want this world to be a better place for the future generations that are coming. And for that to happen is we have to share our knowledge, our our education so that we can bring the younger generations up and the generations like I'm 55, you know, and I'm still learning. I still have, you know, people who, who show me things and, and teach me things. Even if they don't realize that I learn something from everybody every day. And this is, this is me. This is Mama D. I'm, I'm honest. I, you know, 
That's it. I'm e- done. <laughs> okay, everybody's falling asleep. See, I knew I would do <laughs> yeah. I There we got Brian back. Brian, Brian muted himself. Uh, See, he okay. Was, he was snoring. <laughs> I just unmuted him. Brian, you still there? I'm still here, precious. Believe me, I wasn't snoring. I was listening to you. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things about the Three Points of Light show is is I knew that I wanted to do a radio show, but I did not want to do it alone because it's not an easy thing. So this is why I brought Brian and Jennifer along. I said, we need to work together because when we have our conversations, we always seem to mesh you know, no, we don't agree 100% of the time, but that's that's a normal, you know. But one of the things I wanted to do was bring us together and so that the three of us in our each own individual little ways can help, whether it's people in the chat room, whether it's whatever. So I would like, um, Brian, your what you hope that this show can do. What are your hopes for this show? Well, I personally, um, I want to be able to spread uh, two things. One is the person's personal responsibility and abilities. There's so many people. Let's face it, I'm not the only one that can do this sort of thing. Um, I was reading this uh, Joe Who guy this morning. Um, Oh, boy. (laughs) He, He put me into a, you know... A useless category because he, he's got that much ability. But this is what I was saying about this um, intuitive band across your forehead that I imagine. Um, there's all different doors. We can all do different things. If only we try. I know that um, meditation is the start of it all because that then allows you then to open your mind up to all different things. Um, these other thing I, I think is um, the fact that um, I like to help people. I've always done it. I've never ever um, abused the fact. Um, I've done a lot of good things, uh, finding kids. Um, the child I uh, found had been taken by his paternal uh, father, and he. Uh, parents were really, or the mother and the grandmother were really upset. Um, I told them like, by doing remote viewing and such, I went to where the child was with his father, and he was only not even two years old, the child. I told them whereabouts he was, um, 400 kilometres from his home. Uh, see, as I say, where he was, lights from the little village that was just round the coast a bit. Um, anyway, seemingly they got onto the local police, the police then got onto this little village and a couple went round there and they didn't arrest him because he was a father who was allowed to have the child but he just had them taken him back after a day visit, you know. Anyway, that was a very, very successful one. Um, other things, you know, we can all do different things. We can all do things. The idea is to make yourself better at it, be able to really put yourself into life rather than just skid along as the slaves that most people are to, uh, and they're slaves to business. I mean, you earn money and <laughs> they take 99% of the money off of you back in taxes or fines or all the rest of the rubbish stuff that they go on. I'm a very strong believer in living for a living. And uh, I, um, well, since I've retired, as I say, it's, it's absolutely perfect because I can sit a bit of a little pig. <laughs> but um, no, that's, that's my take on it, though, Mama. You know, you, uh, you compound on that one. Jennifer, what, what are your hopes for this show? Unmute yourself, sugar. <laughs> I thought I did. Um, no, you didn't. Um, I would. I really enjoy giving the readings. Um, I do do that, but I don't want these shows to be about the readings. 
But any any kind of help that you can give somebody, I feel that's paying it forward. Um, if it wasn't for all the wonderful people that I met and, you know, they guided me to this one, that one, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, I would have never ventured out <laughs> like I have. And I, have uh, you know, so many people. I would be in the beginning. I would sit in a chat room, uh, and I would I would see these people asking questions or be afraid to ask these questions. And I'd be, you know, I, I would so you know want to answer, but I didn't want to give them the wrong answer. Um, try to direct them to somebody that could help them. Um, so I, I'd like to see more of the teaching shows, more sharing and talking. And having people share their stories. I, I like to see more people use their own abilities and their own intuition. And um, I have grandchildren, and uh, I do sense and see, you know, which one's going to be stronger in this area and which is going to be stronger in other areas. So I know I'm going to where I'm going to have to guide um, my children. Uh, they went through the same. Um, they are still learning. Uh, like I said, I've got a lot of spirits, you know, <laughs> helping me along to, you know, keep them wide awake and paying attention lately. So uh, that's what I'd like to see. I mean, it, you know, if you've got a question, suggestion, would like to see a certain topic on a show, know a certain, get, you know, send us, you know, an email. Um, we do have a uh gmail I'm account getting, i'm getting so, i'm getting <laughs> right so you know and uh but i just i want us to have fun with this and i want this to be more of a learning experience for myself as well okay um on a second i'm going to this, what I just put up now is our Gmail address for this show specifically. So if anybody has any suggestions, any comments, any talking points that they'd like to, you know, for us to, to touch on, uh, not saying that between the three of us know, <laughs> thank you, um, that we know everything, but I can guarantee you that if we don't know it, we know somebody who does know it. So exactly. if we can't, if we can't get the, the topic done right then and there, we have connections in high and low places. And we'll find somebody who can. We'll have them on the show. Because for me, this show is about, like like Jennifer said, like Brian said, is about sharing what we, each each and every one of not just the three of us here, but everybody in the chat as well, sharing what we have so that we can help others grow. And in teaching, we always learn more. I'm not, I don't mean to be like, you know, super mom. Well, maybe my kids might think so at times. <laughs> but, you know, it. this is where I want us to, to go forward. Be fruitful and multiply. Um, we need to, uh, I'm doing two things at one time. Sorry, sometimes I'm just kitty head. I can't do it all. Um that is what I just posted in there is Brian's uh, contact information on Facebook. The first Jennifer's, and it'll come up soon. I want us to to grow, and by growing, I mean our minds, our hearts. We need to do this. It's just it's it has to be done. Mama said, <laughs> so, mom, what is it? so let it be written, so let it be done. Um, yes, and the most important thing about all of these shows, they have to be fun. Yes, no, we're going to tell, no, 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 Roger, that I'll include you. And you, behave yourself, young man. <laughs> um, uh, yes, we will have guests on the show. Um, we. <laughs> I'm glad. So that means you'll be coming on, won't you, Roger? Hmm. And Nell, my gorgeous little native earth lady. Uh, we will have guests on the show. We will do reading shows, but they won't be all about the reading. 
the person who comes on and does readings, whether it's uh, mediumship, whether it's psychic, whether it's cards, whether it's whatever, they have something, they have a story to tell. As like Jennifer said, everybody has a story to tell. And one person might understand, might click with that story, and just that light bulb moment will go off, and, and they can say, my God, that's that's my story. And this is what I do, you know, to better myself, to improve my, you know, to, to get further along my path, is listen to somebody. Whether it's the three of us who are booking the show, or whether it's somebody who who's a guest who comes on our show. Even in the chat room, I've been to many shows that I've learned things just by the talk that's in the chat room, including the fact that Roger needs a good smack every so often. <laughs> but, but Nell is not going to do that on camera. <laughs> so that is that is my hope for the show, that, that we can grow. And um, you will? Okay, we'll get you next week. <laughs> I hope that this will grow and that we can share and that those of us who can share, share. And those of us who want to learn, can learn. It's, you know, like I said, me, it's like all butterflies. And One of the things that I'm going to touch on, and we haven't started yet, uh, Jennifer, Brian, and I will be, um, we'll have a, Okay, a spiritual consultation, which is if you have a question or or you need guidance or whatever the case may be, if you want to meet with the three of us, we will have uh, we have a three points of light uh, on Skype, and the nominal fee is fifteen dollars, and the money will go to something special. It won't go to us specifically. Whether we, you know give it to a charity, give it to somebody to help somebody out. I haven't decided on how that goes. But it's not yet, so don't go rushing to find us on Skype. Um, <laughs> but it's it's an option, something that's coming. And maybe one day we'll do a show, just the three of us doing our, our consultation, our spiritual consultation. So that's another thing that's coming up. I have a lot of hopes for this show. And um, there's a lot of people that I would get on the show, but I also have a lot of people that I want, a lot of things I want people to learn from this show. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to teach. Now, does anybody in the chat room have a comment? Oh, we even have another guest. And it's me. Hi, guest. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. the, uh, the teaching side really is also to be able to help people. Um, it, is, I mean, it, it takes a long time to try and get people to realise um, what what they need and what they want in life. Um, all right, spirit doesn't always come up with what you want, but it will come up with alternatives. What you need. Mm -hmm. What you need. And, uh, exactly. I've I, I found it so... Um, what can you say? experience of realizing and knowing that spirit is there with you all of the time they're not there for anything nasty not there to judge you or you know they're there as your guide and i think that once you do realize this and you get these things come up and you see goodness, you know, i've just never ever been let down by them this is it's, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful stuff. Anyway, back to you, Mama. Sorry. <laughs> no, never apologize. This is, it's the three of us. This is what it's all about. It just seems that I have the biggest mouth in the, in the crew. <laughs> oh, okay. Naked. Yes, it's naked. true. <laughs> Through naked teaching, we do learn. And... Sorry? We, we even learn and teach after death. I like that because... This is exactly what it's all about, the spirits and mm -hmm. such. I mean, my daughter passed in 2001, my oldest daughter, and she still comes back to me even now. You know, I know when she's here, we get this beautiful smell of flowers, and it's the most beautiful scent you can ever imagine in your life. And I just relax off then, and I just let her put things into my mind, and whatever comes in, I mean, I'm a 
mind it, mind this male. So whether it comes in, it's got to come from a female. So. <laughs> no comment. No comment. But yes, we we there is never anybody who tells you that they have nothing to learn, that they know everything. Oh, walk yeah. away Oops. because it's like, Brian. <laughs> but they have. <laughs> They have, everybody has something to learn and everybody has something to teach. And sometimes they work hand in hand. They know who everything is a fool. I have a friend like that, so frustrating. Tell that friend to come to our show. We'll see you. <laughs> and we can actually have the friend on. There you go. I think we all do. We all have friends who... who Say they have nothing to learn. You have nothing to teach me. Whether it's in the spiritual act or, or whatever the case may be. I, I don't think, you know, even the most experienced song, uh, song writer, the most experienced singer, the most experienced writer in every walk of life, even the most experienced still learns something new every day even if it's a tiny little thing. And when they learn something, when they talk about how they are, who they are, where, how they got there, they're teaching. Without realizing it, we teach as we talk. So long as people are open, and you don't try and jam it down their throats with, you know, with a rough hand. Everything can be done gently. There's no need for for brute force. Unless, of course, it's Nell smacking Roger. Sorry, I had to go there again. <laughs> yes. uh, exactly, yes. Corrine. Exactly. Yes. Uh, yep. That, that Corrine, is exactly what it is. What to open your heart. I'm, I'm a great believer in it. You know, live the way that Very you true. know that you should. And uh, I think it's beautiful. Right. <laughs> Rogers, I like to drop breadcrumbs, and those who need, need to will follow them and learn for themselves. Ooh, I like that one. Very nice. So yeah, we have some very interesting people in the chat room. Everybody um, in the chat room, including one guest who you can go back and change your name and don't be afraid to pipe in anything that you have a comment. That's, that's, this is not a, a comment-free zone. Actually, it's like we like you to comment because that way you can teach us something and we'll learn something. Yeah. Yes, some people shut themselves off because they're not happy. And some people know how to open up. I have to admit that before my daughter had this conversation with me, I was just going along. I wasn't. I wasn't living. I was just. Yeah, I was just there. But um, once she was honest with me about what went on with her, then I had to do the same thing. It's very difficult with children, though. To be honest, I mean, mm. I have three daughters and. To say the the oldest one passed, uh, we were very very close. Um, my middle daughter was always a, a bit of a rat bag or rascal, whatever you want to call them. You know, no one term. Her headmaster got onto me and said that she'd had forty three days off, and can I explain why? You know, <laughs> I didn't even know she had days off. But anyway, we sorted that a lot out. The youngest one, um, he, she's perfect, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful person. And uh, I've got more grandkids than focus to get. Uh, I think my biggest hurdle, to be quite honest, was the fact that I couldn't talk to anyone about the things that I could hear, see, do, or anything else. Um, I mean, the women used to do that sort of thing. And, you know, this is men's stuff, you know. We don't do that. And I used to get that so much from lots of people. And then I thought to myself, well, why should it be that way? Why should it? Why do we have to be categorised? Uh, in fact, my good lady wife, Pauline, um, 
who's still sleeping soundly. <laughs> um, she, she often says to me, I'm a half man, half woman, because I think a lot of ways the same way as a woman does. You know, I can see the, the hurt side of things and I find myself in tears quite often, I'll be honest, you know, watching something on television or hearing a particular nasty story about someone who's been hurt or something like that. Um, you, know, you get categorised, and I was as a child. Um, they used to uh, say so my, my parents um, never understood. My mother was a... Uh, well, she was intuitive, yes. Um, she had lots of things going, but she'd never ever used it, and I was punished when I used mine, which to me was stupid because all of her family came from um, the gypsy stock in Ireland. They, were, they used to go around with the old horse and wagon and do healing and God knows what else. And my grandmother taught me healing when I was eight years old, and uh, I've sent that right across the world many, many, many times. She, my mother, um, she could have done it, but she rejected it totally. And uh, I can't see why. My girls haven't shown any signs on, on uh, spirituality at all. I'm not going to push it down their throat. I mean, they know that I'm a spiritualist. They know full well that uh, I do <laughs> funny things. <laughs> and I've uh, been ribbed about it on many occasions. But I, I love the idea that I'm free with that. Uh, you know, no matter who comes up, they can talk to me. And I'll, I'll talk to them, you know, directly with, with um, conviction about my thoughts. And, uh, I, I think this is most men tend to try and hide anything like that because, oh no, you know, that's not me, that's not me and stuff, you know. And I've heard it so many times, and uh, I just feel sorry for them. I think, well, one day you'll learn. Yeah, back to you, sweetie. Me? you okay um you said in the chat room i think uh all three of you have the feel you know i try to get the throat. i think all three of you feel the need to help people heal and know that they are loved this i believe is the gist of most of people in our realm yes most but the thing is is everybody open to it you know, we can feel that where I work on a daily basis, I can, when people come in, I try and bubble myself off, but I, it's not, it's, it's not unbreakable. When I see somebody who comes in who I know is hurting, uh, it's not the time or the place to help them, but they also need to to be open to the help, you know, so it's not, you know, we can... Like I said, we can bang our heads against the wall as often as we want, but until you ask for the help, you know, it's not going to be. Yeah, I think healing is another one of these things that uh, is very, very important. And mm -hmm. everybody can do it. It's just more a matter of um, applying yourself to it. Uh, same yeah. my grandmother taught me when I was eight. Uh, I used to work for a firm called Karama um, over here. Things go all over the world, and they send stuff all over the world. They make all the toilet fittings and um, you know cisterns and everything. I used to look after all their plastic injection machines, and I got to the stage where I could actually go up to a machine and temporarily heal it. Oh, this machine won't work, Brian. Can you know? Oh, I said, I'm just put my hands on the machine, and you know, say so a quick um, prayer and the machine would start up again, you know. And the, mm -hmm. I mean, I done exactly the same thing at Levi's. Uh, I was a uh, sewing machine mechanic. I used to train the mechanics at Levi's over here. And uh, exactly the same thing there. And I used to have a joke with the girls about it, like you would not believe. I mean, there was 500 girls in this factory. And uh, first day, it was a twin needle machine, so in the inside seam leg or outside seam leg, something like that. And we are breaking on, you know, the cotton was breaking on one side. I used to describe it and just put my hand on the machine. Relaxed here for a couple of minutes. Right, try it now. And the machine had worked perfectly, you know, and they go, oh, God, you know. So I've been doing this ever since I was uh, started. And it's it's yeah. something, it's, it's a game that you can play. It's something that I know is there. 
do it often. I mean, people come to me now for healing, and uh, I was healed at our local spiritualist church for many years. And that will fizzle due to people who get jealous, um, so on and so forth. But anyway, I so say healing to me is one of the start points. And everybody can do it. It's just that once you realise it, and uh, you've got to sort of work on it in your own mind. But it's another door in that intuitive end. It, it's honestly, spiritism to me is, is the be all and end all of life. Not everybody thinks the same way. <laughs> mm. um, Nell put in the chat room. Um, we each have a light. For some, that light will shine like rays of the sun. For others, it needs to work. For it, try that one again. For others, it needs work. It must. We must listen and follow the light. And that's one of the thing about the three points of light was that we're not we're we're, we're not claiming to be the light, but we're claiming to help shine the light. Because everybody has a belief, whatever you call your higher power, everybody knows that there's something bigger than us up there, out there, you know, in the universe. And, yeah, but again, some people call it by different, call him or her by a different name. So we just need to help those who, those who shine like the prism, those that are the lighthouse, need to help the ones that come to shine a little, to learn how to shine better. Yeah. You're a mirror that reflects the light. Mm, I like that one. Yeah, I had noticed that uh, the more open I was on my family page, you know, I didn't talk too much about it. You know, I've got my spiritual page, and then I've got the family few friend page. And the more open I was um, about it, um, some did know, some didn't. And then, you know, more people would ask, usually in private. Then they would start, you know, putting it out there in the public. Hey, you know, this is happening. Or, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe this. Well, yes, I would believe that. Um, the more I noticed that more people were open to it in some of their posts, you know, it's like, hmm, this is interesting. Hmm, look at this. Um, so now they're asking more questions and they're more interested in it. And they want to share things that have happened for them that they were too afraid to talk about or were not allowed to talk about. Um, this, you know, you didn't tell people. Um, <laughs> you know, you were crazy. But I, I do, I do feel that, uh, I don't hide it. I don't care who thinks what anymore. Um, I you want to argue with me about it, you know, hey, I can argue back with you if that's what you want. Um, you will not change my beliefs. I know what is real for me and what my reality is. I live mm -hmm. it every day. So um, you can't tell me that I am crazy. Because, yes, I am, but no, I'm not. Um, but I do, I, you know, a lot more people are. Um, you know, my phone was ringing off the hook. I had to really shut down. I had to really shut down and say, hey, you know, I, I've got to have some boundaries here, some big boundaries. Um, I had a lot going on. I was, you know, I felt like I did need to help everybody that came, you know. So I, I have really put my boundaries in place, but I do, you know, I do want to help everybody that I possibly can. Um, if you're willing to listen, if you don't keep coming back to me with the same question over and over and over, and uh, we can go, you know, further rather than going backwards all the time, and I'm not repeating myself, um, don't come to me, you know, in the middle of the night and say, hey, what are you getting for me, you know, six times a week? That's – I'd be like, hey, I'll get you a smile right. back in your head. <laughs> Don't get deleted and blocked. That's what you get. Um, and, but, I, you know, this it's, it's – it's, you know, I always would say, oh, this is a blessing, but sometimes it could be a curse. I don't want to mm -hmm. feel like that anymore. So I have really this time laid the law. Um, I did have to get uh, – you know, a little mouthy, 
<clears throat> with certain people and let them know that, you know, I cannot, yeah, me, uh, <laughs> this, you know, you just can't do this. You just can't do this. I mean, I am human. Um, mm-hmm. I have feelings. I have boundaries. I got things going on. But uh, I do find a lot more people are really more open to this and wanting to learn more. Um so, you know, it's, uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. And I do agree that. Pardon, Brian? It's not everything else, Jen. We cannot prove. Exactly. No, we are all just, I mean, all the books that you read about spiritualism, it's only somebody else's thought. I mean, there's no proof. There's nobody up there which writes a book for them and says, oh, here, print this. You know, I know many people have tried it. Um, but it still comes back to the same thing. The proof of the pudding is what you can <laughs> do and how you can help an individual right. person. And that mm-hmm. I've found all of my life. I mean, I'm a bloody sight older than most of you here, and I, I've been through the mill and back many, many, many times. I think that what we want to do is just really to convince people that there is a different way of life other than things like wars and bloody elections and all that crap that goes on around the world. Mm. Um, you know, we, we are human beings, and I strongly believe that we are um, part alien <laughs> because there's so many things that, um, you know, just do not fit into our worldly environment. And I think that, that you know, until someone actually comes up with the proof there is someone up there, I mean, physical proof. Um, I know there's things above that happen. Um, they've tried many times. Doctors have actually written uh, messages on the top of the lamps in surgeries. So if someone dies, they can read it. And if they come back, they can tell you what's on the top edge of the, the lights. You know. And I think that that sort of thing is more of a proof than anything else because it's there. As I say, where is their proof? I'm so mm. cuddly. <laughs> well, my I'm kids, kidding. you know, have always known. They grew up with this. But uh, just recently, and, you know, it's funny what Diane said about the kids, my da- oldest daughter, and she has always picked things up. But uh, she had been, she was staying with me for a little while. Um, and she's got a mouth on her. I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> but, you know, I have some very, you know, f- funny spirit guides. And, uh, she, although she truly believes and, you know, I, there were things coming up and I'm like, you need to pay attention to this because this is for you. And if I meant to tell you, I'm going to tell you. And, mm-hmm. uh, it was funny because, you know, she, uh, I, I say, I need to get back to me. I need to get back to readings. I need to get to Skype. I need to get to Facebook. This is my life now, you know. This is my connection. And she, yeah, make fun of me. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to stay away for a while. Um, and, of course, Spirit came and started showing off for her a little bit. And, you mm. know, it's like, she's like, oh, wow. Yeah, this is really getting crazy, you know, and, you know, (laughs) there was a couple nights, you know, she's like, do you think you want to stay up and, you know, stay up with me for a little while? And no, I don't. I'm going to off to dreamland, astro travel, whatever. You sit in here and you get your little visits, you know, so uh, it's, you know, it's it's very eye opening Um, (laughs) and a lot of damn fun. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But uh, it's they're going to get their messages through one way or another. Yep, exactly. But one thing that that you said is that that we are here. We want to help some people. Yes. And and but the thing is, we also have to take care of ourselves, which most of us yes. know that we have. We 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 don't do that. <laughs> I can remember um, that it was about. Two years ago, I was doing, doing 
everything that I could to help other people, to help my family, my friends, my Facebook, my job. And I just, all of a sudden, for two weeks, I went blank. I looked yeah. at my cards, and I could have playing solitaire with them. I didn't, I couldn't understand them. I couldn't feel them anymore. I was just, I, the, the switch turned off two weeks. I was like in a two-week timeout. Spirit was like not happy with me. But during that two weeks, I, <laughs> during that two weeks, I took care of myself. You know, right. simple little things. Um, started having my nails done. Something that just, it's just for me. It's not for anybody else. Um, getting home at the end and, and choosing what I want to make for dinner. Not what I think everybody else wants. You know, on them. They can starve. They don't like what I make. Too bad. You know? Yeah, don't, don't forget, in all honesty, your cards are only a tool. Yes, um, I know. A lot of people use many, many, many different things. Uh, and it, they are only tools. Um, your intuition, your, that, that is the thing where it all comes from. Um, I've seen people, two people sitting side by side, uh, and their tools virtually lead them to exactly the same answer. And in, in Adelaide, here where I am, we have a, every year a, um, the spirit uh, shows, a spirit mind and body show, and I've actually stood between two readers and they're reading the same person, and we tried this, and they came up virtually with the same thing right the way through. And as I said, said to them, you know, just try and leave the cards to one side and just use your intuition. And they still came up with exactly the same thing. So, you know, really, it's the, they're only placating, you know, what... Uh, mm. you know, the, but the, the, for, the, for me... For me, I'm I'm not 100% sure of myself. I don't know if I ever will be. But it's it's I'm learning. I'm learning. I do get people who call me and ask me. And I get stuff, but and I'm not using my cards. It's just me and I'm learning. I'm learning, but I do like my cards. Can't help it. You see, it's like my it's like, um, you know, my telepathy. Um, people say to me, you know, well, I don't want you, you know, sort of inside my head and, you know, knowing you about <laughs> You have free reign in my <laughs> But No, the thing being is, uh, I'm sure you'll tell people that if I do a reading on someone, if I get inside their head, it doesn't go anywhere else. You know, I will not ever, ever discuss anything of one person to another person because that is just a breach of confidence. You know, and... Uh, I think that's so, so wrong. Um, <laughs> mind you, I could tell you a lot about, <laughs> a lot about certain people here that, that I'm sure they wouldn't want me to spread around. <laughs> 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 won't, won't go down that street. We no, won't honestly. go down that street. Uh -uh. No, no, but I know it's, that, that it's I have to admit that with Brian and with Jennifer, whenever there's a conversation, there is never, uh, it's never, no tales told out of school you know because we it's like it's like a doctor we have a client patient per doctor patient confidentiality something everybody signs a form saying i will not spell the beans <laughs> brian is not allowed to tell what goes on in here mind you it's a scary place so he shouldn't go there too often but uh, you, yeah no one of one of the really funny things i've done when i was being tested for telepathy by three really good uh, psychics and uh, I went through and told one what her house was like and what she was thinking and everything else you know and I moved around her house and told her that you know gutters were a different colour green to the rest of the house and she was building a conservatory at the back of the house you know and having it rebuilt rather because all the wood was rotting and next one I went on to um, you know I went right through and told her all about her life the third one I came to and she said right oh tell me about me and all, I mean all I could see on the camera was from really from her neck to the top of her head and I said you're just scared that I'm going to tell you you're not, not wearing a brazier <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness <laughs> shut <laughs> up <laughs> honestly she just looked at me and said oh is that funny that's, that's it. cute 
Oh, that was that was one of the biggest laughs I've ever had. But I can't tell you who, what, where, or when. But uh, I, it really wasn't me. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is funny because yeah. it, it, it was about a year ago, and of course it was hell hot out in California at the time, and because uh, that's where she was. And, um, uh, and uh, now, well, I wouldn't think it would be you, Roger. Uh, as far as I'm not. <laughs> but, <coughs> Roger, you're not going up, huh? My goodness. <laughs> well, it doesn't all the time. Let's put it that way. It's only when he's got. We'll, his, we'll his have to ask now. <laughs> So uh, the things the things that you can pick up, you can't spread to other people. You are here to help, and that's, that's it exactly. Um, and it's so personal, it's so rewarding. You know, I, I know telling someone that they haven't got their bra on is <laughs> is um, not quite the thing. It's no help. But it, we were trying to prove at the time that uh, you know what my abilities were. When I say this was about a year ago, so. Mm-hmm. I was open to her since I don't think she could look me in the eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, mm-mm, because it's, nope, 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 nope. I'd be like, yeah, it'd be funny. But, uh, yeah, so um, if anybody has any comments in the chat room, besides the idea that Roger doesn't wear a bra all the time. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's all going to be unrecorded. Did I record? Yes, I'm recording. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now the world will know. <laughs> But if anybody has any questions or comments in the chat room, please pipe up. Um, and you, there's also a little thing. You can turn on your microphones and come and have a chit-chat with us. Oh. Roger. Aw. I feel so bad. I won't say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have people who sit very quietly in the chat room. Sharp is a very quiet man. And my super girl. She pipes in when she has her choices, choices to say. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm a very I am a uh, uh, I am a huzzy when it comes to advertising for my friends. So if anybody's noticed this here beautiful bracelet, mm-hmm, purpleplates.com, sold by Kareen, Supernatural Radio, and and anytime anybody has anything they want to to, to plug, please do that. Yay! See, it's there. It's my favorite. Never go anywhere without it. It. She's. Mm, thank you. Perfect girl. Bring the words to your friends, please. Get them into the room, and then we can, uh, you know, yeah. lots and lots of um, people out there that need help. And I, I think it's uh, that's what that's what I'm here for. I know that for sure. Um, why not? Mm. Sorry. Now, now, why won't we ever get Roger on mic? Is his voice so enchanting that he will? Woo all the women in the room. <laughs> He's just a sock. Ah. Okay, Diane, we should still be here. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like, guess this. Um, one. Your nail is a fantastic person. That sorry. The Brian. Congratulations to Roger, but that. Uh, Nell is a very um, adept person at her job. Yes, she is. Nell is a good lady. She has she has quite a few irons in the fire, and I mean, one day uh, I will get Nell on on <laughs> of my shows. <laughs> but we're here, so let's do this show. Nell, no I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, you know we you know we like you. We just know that you have to bring Roger along as as he's your security. He's you know, he keeps the, the riff raff away from his his now. Doesn't help with me though. <laughs> but uh, so yes, um next week um I'm going to I will make a Facebook event page once we know Good. <laughs> Good. Bye. She should. I still intimidate my husband. Yeah. And Brian's wife also intimidates him. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. That's what we were meant to do. Just <clears throat> enrich your lives. Somehow, yeah. Um, I will make a Facebook event page. Um, usually 
at least once I figure out who, when, where, why, and how. Um, yeah, and if you send a Facebook, a Skype request, just mention that you heard him on the show. Otherwise, Brian won't accept people because he has too many people, too many young ladies trying to make pets at him. And Pauline's lovely wife will just have to smack somebody silly. But yes, I should have the event done by the, usually by the Wednesday or Thursday. Depends on how crazy life is. And, uh, that's, I think that's it. Um, we still have about, ooh, 30 minutes to go. Anybody else have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> don't no rush, don't no rush. Yes, he will. What is, what is your request then, <laughs> Mel? You won't take his requ- her request on Skype. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I do get a lot of... Um, a date. A date. <laughs> people coming through, and I've had blokes coming through as well, making... <laughs> lewd, lewd suggestions and uh, yeah i think we're all getting those a lot lately yeah it's sickening. i well, get them I wanting know. to do rude things with my hair it's like um no yeah no. but <laughs> it's it's funny when people either facebook or skype contact you and it's i just want to be your friend okay fine and they get a little bit too friendly and it's like bye-bye but the, the only gentleman who gentleman i'm using the term very loosely um who sent me a Skype request. And you know that when you send a Skype request, you can add a little hint. Well, his comment was about this long, and he explained to me exactly what he wanted to do with my hair and where he wanted to put it. And <laughs> I was like, no, 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 delete, block, forget it. <laughs> but usually I get um, men in, in uniforms. And I have a soft spot. All men in uniforms and women in uniforms because they do major work for us so yeah <laughs> yes we are right. millionaires not, not in cold hard cash but in love I'm very rich with that but yes no men in, in uniform be they the forces be they police be fire be they ambulance responder whatever they you see them thank them for the job that they do because you know what if it wasn't for them we wouldn't be as happy as we are because I couldn't do what they do. I talk. If I had to be a police officer, I'd <laughs> work people silly. I'd make people crazy. Could you imagine me going up to your car asking you for your driver's license? Excuse me, can I have your license and registration? You did what? And have a sniff <laughs> in your car at the same time. <laughs> That's right. Like, hello, what is that pungent smell coming from your car? Yeah. It's just, it's just, I'm not there. There, I will never be um, able to be um, nasty and and I'm I'm sorry. There's nothing. There's almost nothing you can do to make me angry. And if somebody crosses that line, and this, is I've, I've not been angry now. In all honesty, darling. Hey, boo. I can't remember <laughs> being angry uh, for well, 30, 40 years. Ever since I've done meditation, it's taken all the anger out of me, you know, because now <laughs> I think it's <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, uh, my, my anger only comes out when you... Um, <laughs> yes, same time, since, uh When you... Um, When you affect my children, my children are my life and my blood, and my sister and her children cross that line, and there's no going back. Some people have tried that line and have, well, there's still a life, let's put it down. <laughs> right. We're human. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. Human. Yeah. It, it's that, that is one of my biggest uh, things with the protection of my three girls. My eldest daughter, Lynn, the one who passed, she was quite a big girl, if you know what I mean. Um, top. <laughs> anyway, 
Mm. A guy came round one night and he knocked on the door and I opened the door and he said, "Is your daughter there, mate?" You know, typical Australian. And uh, I said, "But I've got three. Which one?" He said, "The one with the big tits." <laughs> oh my God! Excuse me. Honestly, honestly, I smacked him straight in the mouth, and he went down the stairs backwards and landed on the lawn. And then got up and started running, and that's the last time I got really upset with anybody. But um, you upset my daughters. You believe me, you upset me. You know, and oh, that guy. Well, I think he's still running. <laughs> no, it's it's a strange thing because there are certain things which do turn you upside down, and he's mine. But uh, you normally find these yeah. people with red hair the most uh, angry. And, comes from the Irish, that's what it is. Yes. Well, we all have, we all have, we all have that line that everybody borders. And, and like, um, uh, it was, there you go, Roger, mess with me, but don't mess with my family. That covers it all. Come at me with anything you got because I can defend myself. My words can can cut you faster than any knife, and my smile—I do it all with a smile. I cut you down with a smile, but uh, yeah, you mess with me all you want. Don't mess with my children. Don't mess with my babies. And that, there's a lot of babies, but they kind of adopt a lot of people. Yeah, Roger's dead the right there. Absolutely, mm-hmm. right. Roger yeah. speaks for me. You know that is exactly how I feel. So even now, I mean, my young daughter, her husband—I mean. You want to see, I've seen him literally lift up the side of a car, you know, to, to change the wheel. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, he looks after my youngest daughter, and he, he honestly admits to me, you know, he loves the light. He said, there's no other. Now, they've been married for 20, yeah, it must be 20 years now. And uh, got two beautiful kids. And as he said, three people in my life, he said, you upset them. He said, you're going to know. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> He's, he's a softie, really. I mean, he's a, you wouldn't believe he's the only one around us that believes in what we do. He's not a spiritual, as he said, I'm not a spiritualist myself. He said, I don't, uh, don't work that way. But, uh, I, don't, I haven't got any gifts or anything mm. like that. But believe me, he said, I know what you're saying. And uh, I, I really appreciate that because for one who, I mean, he's, he's well educated, I'll be honest. He's um, got more accolades than I have. Uh, I just noticed we lost no, somebody in chat. Change, hmm. Hmm. I hate when that happens. I can't figure it out. Supergirl's still there. Roger, Neil, Millicent. Hmm. I know. There she is. Jennifer. She was gone. I'm here. Second. Okay, wait a minute. Somebody's gone in chat. I just, That's I don't Robert. Like that. Robert. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, the you, important Robert. ones are still here. Yes, well, Robert is is probably got a show to do. <laughs> Robert has his own show on Blog Talk. He's, yeah, yes, he is. he's a very very busy, very busy guy. Which I'm hoping that we'll get him on our show as well. What's ten ten? It must be her time. Okay, mine's eight ten. I know she's got to go to work. So, uh, no, Mine's seven eleven. Ooh. Mine's whenever I feel like it because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a numbers person. I <laughs> I pay attention. I, I do get a lot of um, orbs here. You know, I mean, I put up a curtain one day and. You know, it's a blue ash, it's an old blue bedspread. And uh, I tripped it up on the wall down in the in our lounge room and uh, took photographs. And one time I, I counted a hundred. Oh. And you could actually see where some of them were streaking across the room, you know, and because uh, they'd got that little trail behind them. Right. Mm. So many, so many. I was uh, talking to a friend of ours, and he is a total non believer. And uh, he said, um, Oh, he said, I don't believe in all this rubbish about, you know, orbs and all that bit shit. They're just bits of dust, you know. Anyway, while we were sitting there, I took a photograph of him. He's got a blue jumper on. 
never mind. Anyway, I'd look at the picture now because it's a digital one. I said to him, well, and I said, look at this. And I showed him the, showed him the photograph and he got an orb about the size of a yeah, teacup right on his chest. And when he saw it, he's desperately playing. Oh, oh, no. trying to brush it off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you don't believe in orbs, you know. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Brian, so, Roger wants to know what part of Australia are you in? I believe it was in Adelaide. Yeah, it's in Adelaide, um, <laughs> South Australia. Uh, <coughs> for me, it's absolutely beautiful. I came out from London 40 odd years ago, and uh, oh, I, was, I came here, saw it. <coughs> Mm. I said, this is mm. it, this is the place I know I'm meant to be. And uh, it's worked out perfect ever since. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful country. After coming from the east end of London, you know, where everybody's a mother. No. <laughs> it's a whole new ball game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Brian, you're going to have to share those uh, pictures of those orbs. Uh, that's something else I'm very into. I like, uh, I can pick the, usually get to see the spirits yeah, in, in the orbs. Them. Yeah, I love it. Oh, I yes, I love it. Faces in them like you wouldn't believe. You know, oh, yes, I would believe it. <laughs> I love that stuff. How about this? I get hexagonal ones as well. You get what? Hexagonal ones, you know, six sides. Yeah. And you think, well, hang on, how come there's some round and some, you know, Six-sided ones, and they all sort of mingled in together. And then one came in with um, it was four flat, flat sides, and the rest of it was curved. Right. You don't get don't get faces in those. Those only the small ones you get faces in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Beautiful stuff. I love and that. Yeah. Dog sits in the middle of the room, and he watches them go round. You know. Yeah. He can see them. He's got quite used to them now. They they come and sit on me. You know. And <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting by the side of me and he just stares at them. You know? <laughs> yeah, my dog, Casper, he's uh, very intuitive himself. <laughs> Pretty funny. Beautiful stuff. I love it. I, you know, to me, spirituality is everything. Good. You know what today, Diane? Does he? No? Good on you. <laughs> That's true for you guys. It's it's uh, Monday morning. Thanks for coming, Diane. It is now 9.45 a.m. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, it's um, so much to do. So many people want help. And uh, if I concentrate on someone, I can normally find out where their problem is. And, uh, sometimes it's not what they're thinking. It's a background issue. And that background issue is sort of clogging up everything else, and they can't get past it. Mm. But two or three people that live close to us that. Uh, well, I think that's going. one of the things that we'll we'll try and do is is have, um, you um, have somebody in the chat room who's willing for you to explore into their mind. Roger. Because <laughs> we know if we go into Nell's mind, she'll be perfect and adorable and cute. And all she'll want to do is smack Roger. Now, whether you smack him like this or like that, just a different choice. Yeah, the thing being is, it's very difficult because how can I do that without revealing what their problem is? Well, that'll be a choice that the, that the guest okay. will make. I think that's uh, that's the biggest thing which um, which worries me. You know, I mm. think it's, no, it's, it's a breach of confidence. Um, I've never ever discussed other people. Oh, Nell problems. says she will too. Nell <laughs> says she will let yeah. you go. And that's with, with these the radio shows. That's why I like doing more of the private readings. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with doing them on the air, if if and when, you know, you want a reading on air, um, you need to know that what is going to come through is what is, you know, meant for you to hear. Yeah. So if you ask, 
you know, sometimes be careful what you ask for because we get what they want you to know, <laughs> not what, you know, you want to know. Oh, right, I know. I don't have one, right? Rain That's funny. <laughs> but yes, I think, I think, but I do believe that I'm, I'm hoping that when we do have our shows that are reading shows, that we don't have people who, will I find my true love? Because unfortunately, I am of the, the belief that your true love is in the mirror. And until you can honestly, honestly admit to yourself that you are the be all and the end all, there, no. you don't need anybody else. One and of I'll, my pages, one of my pages that I run, you know, Eternal Circle, mm-hmm. I'll get, you know, I'll put threads on there and people come up and, you know, you know, how is my dog? Uh, and you see yourself, you dark cow, you know, <laughs> as if anybody's bloody interested, you know, and uh, am I going to, you know, am I going to move this week, you know, and you see, and these come from all over the world, it's not just uh, local Adelaide stuff, you know, it's mm-hmm. what, three or four that come in from India and Pakistan, you know, um, they're yeah. very, 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 very money orientated. And is my boyfriend going to marry me because I'm desperately short of money? You know, he's, he's a chief, shallow bitch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brian, watch the language. Jenny's going to suss me on that for it. It's only what I was thinking at the time. Uh. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, you know I, I just come back with answers. You know, no, yes, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I won't do. I won't do the full uh, depth readings for any of them. I think somebody else has disappeared from the room. Yeah, my my guest. I turned off my cell phone. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm okay now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no. I like I said. Um, I'm hoping that we do do some reading shows, whether it's us or whether it's a guest. Uh, I want this to be fun. I want this to be, you know, a good time, but informative as well. Mama D and me wants everybody to get in line and straighten up and be happy. Did you get that, Roger? Get in line and <laughs> straighten up. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm picking on Roger. But now I'm sure it's okay with you. If it's not, just let me know. But, uh, yeah, so we have about um, 10 minutes left. So speak up, please. It's all good. Well, I'm glad. I I do hope that, that everybody enjoyed the show because, like I said, this is our very first show together. And it's something that, that we wanted to do. And who is talking? No one. You will. I heard noise. Jen, were you trying to talk? No. Okay. Wasn't Why was me. I hearing? I'm going to have to pick. I was hearing blips. Hmm. I'm glad. Right. Yeah, I am too. Um, yeah, okay. I uh, I heard it earlier. And uh, I think I did heard it when it, you were hearing it too. Okay. Who knows? We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to go back and listen to the show in, in archives just to see if we can focus on what's that. Ghost? Hmm, quite possibly. Quite possibly it's spirit trying to come through in different right. ways. I mean, they, they do a time. Yes, uh, wait a minute. Our attention. Yeah, I've had that happen. Um, pretty awesome. My question is, okay, I have a little question that, that, that will not be fully answered. It will just be either a yes or no. Uh, Jennifer, you had um, somebody who was saying that we need to be spot on today. Do you think she's okay with what we did? Oh, mm. uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's funny. I was thinking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, and um, I did get, you know, ask for that validation today and Okay. It sure was given. So um good. Yeah, I feel much better. Cool. Cool. Much better. Sorry. My teddy bear fell on the floor. Wanted to come and play. Oh, <laughs> I have a lot of little I have a whole bunch and they help me they help me with my Reiki. I have a little frog and and when I need to send healing to children, 
I put oh. their name in a little package that sits under his throat, and his name is Michel. You've, you've hit on the subject that I am most fervent about, all right? What's the difference between healing and Reiki? It's Other just a name. I did yeah. it, um, I've done it healing when I was younger. I can remember that uh, when I was on the high school basketball team, I was a cheerleader. And when the boys would pull a muscle somewhere, not there, they would come <laughs> sit down and I, would, and I would be able to put my hands on them and, and massage. Every, they would back up to play um, basketball. I was good at that. And But nowadays, people need... Uh, I needed to learn how to focus what I was doing. Um. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you believe. The only, difference, the only difference between the two is a piece of paper that costs you money. Because I know many, many, many people who do Reiki. And to be honest, as a proven fact, mm-hmm. I'm a lot, a lot more powerful than they are. But maybe because they feel bad on a particular day um, they've got no more attributes than I've got uh, and I haven't got any more attributes than they've got um, but it's the belief that you can but in some respects in some respects um, Reiki the, 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 the word the, the energies that, that people are doing are now being more and more accepted and like Jane said it's a certificate that show you that what you're doing is a legal proof here in, in Canada, it's not as well uh, thought of, but I know in the UK places, they're, in, in their, um, they're allowing it into the hospitals. But the thing is, if you have, for me, my Reiki is, is a foundation. My It's not the only thing I do. I do other healings as well. But for some people, they go, spiritual healing, what the heck is that? Or, you know, energy healing, what the heck? And you say Reiki, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. So, you know, for me yeah, it was... Proof that somebody else has really uh, investigated you and found that you can and are okay at doing it. But, uh, mm-hmm. as I say, um, mm. healing, yeah. I mean, I've been doing healing since I was eight and, oh... I don't know. I, I always think myself. Well, over here they want about thousand. I think it works about thousand two hundred dollars to do the full course. Mm. You know, I said it. Why well, I, because I can do it. I was I was lucky. Um, my Reiki master came to me and he asked me when I was when I were we were in a group and said and I was giving I was saying oh I'm sending my mama D hugs and he came to me and says why aren't you sending Reiki. And I was like, um, I looked into it because it's uh, a, a fortune to do. Um, B, as far as I know, there's no Reiki masters around here. And C, uh, more than likely they'd be French. And as you can see, I'm English, so you know, I'm in Quebec, darling. Um, so I needed, you know, and he said, oh, you know, all good points. And uh, we came to an agreement. Uh, he came back to me and says. I have a deal for you. And we came to an agreement. So I've got my level two, and I'm very happy with it. And if I want to go further, I can. But I sent I, – I was curious one time to see somebody who knew what Reiki was, knew what – but had different uh, levels of, of Reiki than I and different way, formal, more modalities of healing. So I asked her, can I send you healing? It was a long-distance healing. I'm here in Quebec, and she was in the States. And she said, yes. So um, I did. I sent her healing. And I do it, don't do it exactly as I was taught. I do my own thing. And she came back to me and she said, it was, she said, it was a very interesting way of healing that I felt. She says, there was, it was more of a shamanic healing involved in there. And I have no idea what shamanic healing was previously to that. And it was something I want to look into, and then they know there's a lot of different. But it's just, for me, the the the, the Reiki certificates open doors. And, and, yeah, people can do all kinds of healing. Everybody has the ability to heal. But some people just have to learn to focus. Some people focus it naturally. Like I said, when I was a child, when I was a teenager, I focused it naturally. 
And then, you know, I stopped doing it for whatever reason. But, you know, I stopped doing it for other people. I would do it for, you know, my husband, my boyfriends at the time, you know. <laughs> I know where your head's going. Um, but it, it's, it was just, like I said, for me, it's, it's, it's the, the key to open certain doors. And unfortunately, in a lot of places, you need that key. You know, I, I don't go outside of my own sphere really to do healing. Um, a friend of mine came to me. She was going over, to, or she went over to New Zealand from here, and uh, she got there and phoned me up within six hours of getting there, I think, and said that all of them in Christchurch were suffering from this dreaded lurgy thing that was going around and. You can already feel it in her throat, and she's really, you know, really bad. And that can I send her healing, which I did. Um, anyway, she she said, "Well, it's strange." You know, the next day she found out again. She said, "Well, it's strange." She said because she felt the throat thing, and that disappeared. I was doing the healing. Everybody else in the neighbourhood had got this, um, you know, uh, an influenza bug thing that was going around and uh, it lasts for two weeks and they get it and she said I've only got two weeks here you know and I can't afford to so I said well you won't get it now and she didn't and it's absolutely perfect so all those sort of things you know that um, it shows you how powerful any healing would it be um, mm -hmm. I just don't agree with this idea of taking money to be honest you know for, for healing I think it's no. Yeah, here in the States, the doctors, nurses, uh, you know, even the spiritual are being more, uh, you know, recognizing the spiritual and the healing and things. And uh, mm -hmm. like they said, there's a lot of people that go to the hospital or hospice that would rather have the spiritual or the holistic healings. Yeah. But it's just, you know, they don't know much about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't know much about it. So, uh I think it's going to progress here in the States. It will. It, it, will, get more. it will everywhere. Yeah, as, um, you know, people get more um, desperate for money and so on and so forth, they won't better afford to go to hospitals and such, and you'll find that our type of healing, whether it be Reiki or whether it be spiritual healing, um, will come to the fore. I think it's a, there's a lot more of it needed. Uh, right. I know how powerful it is because I've actually healed machines. So... Um, I think if you can go that far, then uh, it's obvious that you could go even further. I mean, there's some people in Bali um, that literally, uh, they reckon that you can put the, you know, his hands into your body without breaking the skin and uh, fix up the things that are wrong. Look at Jen, um, Jeff Lone Reagan. Now, he's a classic because he actually went uh, from where he is, he, he put himself into a woman's body who had a split in um, one part of her bowel and she was going to go in for major surgery and he was in there and he said he can actually feel himself sewing up this split. Anyway, the next day they took her down for um, you know ECG or whatever it is they do these you know, doctors and they said that's funny it's disappeared. Now how true can you get? Now he is a 100% Reiki master, instructor type thing. You know, he does it all these. We often have a chat and, uh, you know, compare notes. But we're exactly the same as each other. Uh, he has gone a lot further with um, healing than uh, than I ever have, you know, because mine, I take for granted, to be honest, and he uh, only does things for sort of specialists. Anyway, okay, well... We have Good. now hit the 831 mark. Um, I thank you all again for coming. Uh, Diane, Jane, Brian, Jennifer's Journey, Millicent, Nell, the awesome Native Earth Lady, Roger, who put up with me picking on him, and my one and only Supergirl. And I hope to see you all next week, same time, same bad channel, and uh, keep an eye out. Much love. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yes. Thank you for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye.